Hey there friends, it's Carly. Welcome back to my channel or hello if you're new here and welcome to today's video where we are planning, prepping and getting all organized for the new month ahead August. For my Northern Hemisphere friends, it is your opportunity to soak up the last month of summer sunshine, whereas us in the South, I don't know about everyone, but I am certainly very keen for this final month of winter and for spring to spring into action. So if you are keen for some cleaning, some planning and some general life reset, grab yourself a cuppa and let's get into the video. Alrighty friends, it is a Saturday, which is cleaning day. So we are kicking off this monthly reset with a little bit of a house reset. I'm not filming my full weekly cleaning routine, but I do have a heap of clean with me videos on my channel. So make sure you go check some of those out after watching this one to give you some hardcore cleaning motivation. But I am going to show some bits and pieces of today's clean, such as wiping down the bathroom, doing some dusting in the bedroom, vacuuming the lounge, and then also some laundry motivation thrown in there as well. Baby, I will show you how you can catch my vibe And right away I saw much time Looping in the blurry lights Get in my way now, don't be shy We'll be here dancing day and night Get in my groove now, don't be shy Cause I got this list of my favorite things You could be the part where it all begins You could be the first and the second and the third and the rest of Okay, a well-deserved iced coffee is made. The atmosphere has been set with a fresh candle burning and we are now collecting all of the books, pens, highlighters and moving into the life organization portion of this monthly reset routine. 
The first thing that I'm going to do is organize myself in my diary. So I'm going through and putting in any appointments. I do have a lot going on this month in terms of both school with marking, reports, parent-teacher interviews, but also in terms of my personal life, lots of sort of doctor's appointments, other appointments coming up. And one new addition that I wanted to make to my weekly diary was also scheduling in when I was going to share my videos on other platforms and also when I was going to upload photos to Instagram. I will admit, while I have been quite consistent with my weekly YouTube videos, I have been off my game when it comes to Instagram, both posts and stories, and I want to make that a more consistent habit. I ended up going pretty good when it came to my July goals. So I did book in for my tax. I organized all my tax receipts. I did a day trip with mum. Um, and planned out all of my August content. So I'm so excited uh, for what is coming this month in terms of videos, and I hope you guys are too. I have also done a whole heap of name changes. So new cards, new things happening. I am officially Carly Hampton, which is exciting. The only two things that I didn't get done was organized boxes in the shed. I've been doing like a whole heap of deep cleaning and decluttering around the house, but I have not made my way out to the shed yet. In saying that, in order to get to the boxes that actually belong to me in the shed, which is mostly Christmas day call, um, I need to wade through a whole heap of Dave stuff. So having him home on, on the day that I decide to do that would be handy. Um, and the other thing I didn't get done was get my wedding book printed. I did find um, an online sort of book collaborator printer um, and I have made the wedding book. And then in the process of doing that, I also made up a couple of other books too. So I haven't done that yet, but I have made my August TBR. I've also made my August goals and a little bit of a wish list because I have been tucking away a little bit of money and uh, sort of setting it aside to buy a few things. Um, one of those will be the photo books that I've curated. Um, and I also want to print some of my wedding photos and get some frames so that when we you know, move into our new house, I can have a bit of a gallery wall. But in terms of my August goals, I've got get my tax done. Now that I've booked in, I'm actually booked in for August, so we'll get that happening. I want to go into the furniture shop and actually lay by the furniture that we have selected and I can sort of slowly start paying that off. I want to go down and see the house and film a little bit of a house updates for you guys. Save a thousand dollars and do another Vinny's trip to drop off all the other bits and pieces that I have decluttered from the house. It is time for my favorite segment of every monthly reset video and that is my book reviews. We are starting off with my July reads and ratings and it was once again a mixed bag. So I'm going to start off with my two favorite books of the month and that was The Paris Affair and The Paris Apartment and I ended up rating both of these a four out of five. I did enjoy them but I wasn't like super can't put it down to where I would give it a four and a half or even a five. They were very similar themes, sort of romance slash thriller. Well, at least this one had a romance angle. This one was mostly just a thriller angle. So in The Paris Affair, we've got Harper, the main character. She is a kind of struggling journalist, to be honest, and sort of gets embroiled in an interesting romance and then also tries to insert herself into an interesting story, that of a murdered girl 
uh, and then another body does show up. Uh, very similar MO and she's trying to connect the cases to see whether they are committed by the same perpetrator and she has a suspect in mind. Um, is that the correct person? We will find out at the end. But either way, in sort of uncovering, you know, the mystery surrounding this girl's death, she sort of gets very close contact with the killer herself and puts herself in a quite dangerous position. So this one was very interesting to read. And then in the Paris apartment, I feel like even though I gave it the same rating, I didn't quite like this one as much. And I feel like the reason for that is each chapter is a different person's perspective. So we've got Ben who lives in an apartment with a number of other people, each of them on a floor, Ben's on his own floor and his sister rocks up to come stay with him but all of a sudden he's missing. He was meant to be there, things are looking sus, like there's um, maybe what looks like a bleach stain on the floor, a very cryptic kind of last voicemail message. So the sister starts to investigate what happened to her brother. Did he just disappear? Has something more sinister gone down? And it becomes quite clear that the people who are other residents of the apartment have something to hide and potentially one of them is involved in Ben's murder or disappearance. But the thing that I didn't like about it as much was that each chapter was from a different person's perspective living in the apartment and I felt like I wasn't able to connect 100% with any of the characters. I feel like if we just stuck to the sister's perspective, maybe you could get to know her a little bit more and be connected to her as a protagonist and therefore enjoy the story. Still, it was quite thrilling. I kept on switching my theories as to who I thought might be involved. In the end, I'm always wrong, but it was a good read. So they're my two good reads of the month. And now here are my two not so good reads of the month. So the first one was Paris Dreaming and it did have like a very aesthetic vibe to it. It says Paris as much myth as reality is indeed a city for the world's dreamers, for yearning outsiders who inhabit the city in their hearts. Parisian is a state of mind as well as a place. And I guess the thing that I didn't like about this is it was part memoir interwoven with kind of like historical non-fiction. So um, I was going to say the main character. The, the persona is like telling the story of different trips to Paris and her experience there and how it kind of helped to elevate her fashion sense, expose her to love, art, history, culture, all those things, which is I liked that aspect of the story. But there was too many other uh, um, in-depth kind of historical references to different artists, writers, fashionistas, architecture. And I love learning about history, but in this sense, I really wanted to have like more of a personal connection and personal journey um, rather than having all of these deviations into different realms that I wasn't super interested in. So I ended up giving this a two and a half. And if you can see right there, I did not finish it. So I am going to take my bookmark out and I'm going to return this to whence it came. Good old Vinny's. Uh, and hopefully it will be up someone else's alley. And then another one that I have not been enjoying and like at this point I'm not quite finished. I've got two chapters. I've been pushing myself to get through it, which if you've known from previous uh, Reset Routine uh, book review segments, I don't really do that anymore. If I'm not feeling it and I try for a little bit, I tend to just give up and like better spend my time elsewhere. But this is normal people and the mundaneness of the title pretty much reflects the content of the book. So similar vibe to The Paris Apartment, which I didn't like. We are deviating between two character perspectives and voices. Um, 
Another thing that I noticed straight away that I also didn't like is that none of the dialogue is actually punctuated. It's kind of just like a run on. I'm not sure if it's meant to be some sort of stream of consciousness type sentence, but as an English teacher, it annoys me. <laughs> I also just found the two main characters quite annoying. Neither one of them are very likable and maybe the title normal people is a reference to their desire to be more normal because they're quite abnormal, weird, even almost people um, on their journey to become normal and they have this sort of on again off again friendship slash relationship with each other which really just annoys me i honestly just want both of them to just get their act together personally just on an individual level but then also if they want to be with each other they need to get their act together in that sense too so most things about this book irritated me i guess the reason why it sort of got me through this far is there were dramatic kind of plot elements and some character development slash growth going on which sort of I wouldn't even say it kept me hooked but it just kept me going to a greater extent um, so I'm rating this one a three out of five and this will also be a Vinnie's book as well. So setting myself up for a month ahead this is my selection um i've got mostly kind of thriller-esque type books and then one random non-fiction which i suppose we will start with it is the grace filled homestead and i've actually started reading a couple of chapters of this already primarily because the last lot of my july books were kind of duds and i was really interested in this i tell you what the whole lifestyle coffee table uplifting slow living with a christian-esque perspective is definitely my niche um i have one other book that kind of like hardcore fills into that category and i love it so much i often go back to it so i was searching amazon recommendations you know going down the rabbit hole of if you like this book you'll like this one as well and found this one it says lessons i've learned about faith family and the farm which is very cute um, it's written by Lana Stenner. She also has a blog as well, and it's got a whole heap of stories, hearty recipes, and helpful how-tos. Lara Stenner invites you to incorporate the heart of homesteading, slower living rooted firmly in faith and family into your everyday life. So definitely up my alley. It also has a whole heap of really cute pictures along the way, which I am definitely about and I can say from having read a first you know few chapters that it's super just uplifting and wholesome and is definitely going to be up my alley and then moving on to my fictions of the month we're going with another Pip Drysdale so actually the Paris Affair from last month was also her and this one is The Strangers We Know and it says on the back, imagine seeing your loving husband on a dating app. No, I'd rather not imagine that actually. Now imagine that's the best thing that happens to you all week. Where Charlie sees a man who is a spinning image of her husband, Oliver, on a dating app, her heart stops. Her first desperate instinct is to tell herself she must be mistaken. After all, she only caught a glimpse from a distance as her friends laughingly swiped through the men on offer. But no matter how much she tries to push her fears aside, she can't let it go because she took that photo on their honeymoon. Suddenly, other signs of betrayal start to add up, and so Charlie does the only thing she can think of to defend her position. She signs up to the app to, app to catch Oliver in the act. But soon, Charlie discovers that infidel infidelity is the least of her problems. Nothing is as it seems, and nobody is who she thinks they are. All right, love this. Kind of, my initial impressions is very reminiscent of The Perfect Marriage, which was my five out of five for this year. So hopefully it's going to deliver. Now the next one, Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. Mum had been telling me that I need to read this for so many months and I'm like mum the TBR is quite long here and it got to the point where she just bought it for me for my birthday so 
I, I told her that it would be on the August list. Uh, it says, I wanted to lose myself in the small town of Pelion, Maine, to forget everything I'd left behind, the sound of rain, the blood, the coldness of a gun against my skin. Ooh. For six months, each breath had been a reminder that I survived. My dad didn't. I'm almost safe again, but the moment I meet Ar Archer Hale, my entire world tilts on an axis and never rights itself again. Until I trespass into his strange, silent and isolated world, Archer communicates with no one. Yet in his whiskey colored eyes, something intangible happens between us there's so much more to him than just his beauty his presence or the way his hands communicate with me on me but this town is a mired is mired in secrets and betrayal and archer is the explosive center of it all so much passion and so much hurt but it's in archer's silence that we might just find what we need to heal and to live so definitely more of a romance it's kind of giving Colleen Hoover vibes at the moment, but mum seems to rate it and rave on about it. So we will be discussing in our September reset whether she is to be believed because who was it that recommended something to me? And I was like, that was really crap and, and we're not believing them anymore. I feel like it was Shale. You can't trust Shell. All right, my last book is Sydney Sheldon's Tell Me Your Dreams. We're back with Sydney Sheldon. Love to throw, throw a Sheldon in there every once in a while. Someone was following her. Ooh. She had read about stalkers, but they belonged in a different, faraway world. She had no idea who it could be, who would want to harm her. She was trying desperately not to panic, but lately her sleep had been filled with nightmares and she had awakened each morning with a feeling of impeding doom. Thus begins Sydney Sheldon's chilling novel, Tell Me Your Dreams. Three beautiful young women are suspected of committing a series of brutal murders. Love this. Thriller. It's my vibes. The police make an arrest that leads to no one uh, to one of the most bizarre murder trials of the century. Based on real medical cases, Sheldon's novel races from London to Rome to the city of Quebec to San Francisco with a climax that will leave the reader stunned. Very cool. Now, last but not least, I want to wrap up by showing you three more books that were recent Amazon purchases. Uh, I bought them for myself as a birthday gift because when you're 34, that's kind of what you have to do. Uh, so the first one actually, and this is the only fiction, it is Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Gillian McAllister. How do you stop a murder when it's already happened? And I'm not going to read the blurb of all of these because they're not on a TBR yet. So when they get on the list, then I'll give you more info. But this one had been on my wish list for a while. And so I decided to pick it up and also on the wish list for a while is a manual, an invitation to prepare him room at Christmas and always by Ruth Chow Simmons. If you're not new to the resets and the book wrap ups, you would know how I feel about Ruth Chow Simmons. She is a legend, all right? She creates these beautiful, uplifting books, glorious artwork. And I realized that this is kind of a Christmas themed, uh, but, it's never too early or too late to get into the Christmas spirit. So I will definitely be saving this for the December TBR. And last but not least, it's our girl, Reese Witherspoon. And it's her whiskey in a teacup. What growing up in the South taught me about lo life, love and baking biscuits. And this had also been on my Amazon wish list for a while. Both these two were a little bit more expensive so they kind of lingered on the list until I just got up the courage to put them in the basket and buy them for myself as a birthday gift. Okay, continuing on with a bit of life reset. The first thing I'm going to do is take my July book choice fails out to my car and place them amongst the many bags I have in my boot to go to Vinnie's. And I did end up doing my Vinnie's drop off in this current week ahead, which is fantastic. However, I will continue to peruse through the house assessing 
different aspects and seeing what else I can declutter. I'm also going to write myself a little grocery list and then I'm going to collect my shopping bags and head over to Aldi to do the weekly grocery shop. After Aldi, I made a quick pit stop in at one of my favorite cafes for a muffin and a coffee and then headed in my car to the petrol station to fill up for the week prior to heading home. Here is one of the many very exciting things in my life at the moment, the well-awaited house update. And so many things have happened over the last at least month. First of all, we've got the roof on, windows, bricks, those beautiful posts out the front. On this day, Dave was finalizing some of the insulation on the internal walls. All the kind of external walls around the house were covered by Allworth. And we also had a massive delivery of all our gyprock for both the walls and ceiling. The aircon ducting had also just gone in and then fast forward a few weeks later this is what we have a lot has changed in the house since my last little update for a starter as you can see we've got walls and a roof our front door has been delivered yeah that looks gorgeous but not installed and i love how wide it is we've also got all the doors for the rooms and I love how they've kind of got this sort of recessed sort of area so it makes it a little bit more exciting than just a flat door. We don't have any of the handles on yet, they are going to be matte black. Exciting! And then we've also got all of our um, bathroom and kitchen kind of um, benches yay so this is for our master we've got it's all kind of prepped ready for the tiles to be done starting tomorrow you can see they've set out where the herringbone is going to be our little shower recess love that love that our bathroom door is a bit different than the other doors and you can see all of our cabinets have the matte black fixtures as well. Oh, and they've got down the tops. So this is the sort of marble look bench top. It is an oyster. Oh, wait, do they have? Oh my gosh, sorry, I'm taking things apart here because I've got to see this. I think they've got our bowls in. They've got our bowls in as well. They need a good clean up, but look how good they look. The matte black, that looks fantastic. Our big stack of doors are in at the back here. Let me go outside so you can see them better. Looks so good. And here is our kitchen. So we opted for a bit of a dark gray insert on the island. Someone's left their Macca's bag. I'll put that in the bin. 
um, but the actual benches themselves are more of like a white speckle. So you can see here, speckly white, same um, matte black fixtures. These ones are longer, which I feel like is really cool. And we've also got a matte black um, basin too. And then if we go in here, this is our butler's pantry. Obviously I can't turn the light on, so hopefully you can kind of see, but we've got all the space there for the fridge. And then we've got a sink insert in there as well. Obviously this is where all our food will go. That little wine shelf, we don't really drink at all. And we certainly don't drink wine, but I'm sure we'll make a use of that. It all looks so good. It's so exciting. Here is the laundry. We have a different bench top here. It's not the same color as we have in the bathrooms, but it is like a, a speckly dark gray. This is just a laminate. And then we'll have the washing machine there. We'll need to put the dryer on top, but we've got benches on both sides. So this is gonna be a fantastic laundry. And I honestly didn't know that there was gonna be a hanger there. So that is great. I'll be able to put all my cleaning supplies in here. And this is our main bathroom. Just a small vanity there. We've got the bath there, shower. You can see this is our feature wall, our herringbone. They've made little notes of it. And then the toilet will go there. Looks so good. It's a bit later in the day now, but I've been super productive. I put all the groceries away, washed my produce, did four loads of washing, and I've only got one load that I need to now put away. I did walk the dog this morning, so I don't need to worry about that this afternoon, but I am gonna go into the spare room now, light some incense and do some yoga, and then have a very relaxing bath to wrap up my evening. But thank you guys so much for joining me on today's video. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below. I put out new videos every single week. With that being said, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your week and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.